Alright, g'day guys and welcome back today to another Obsidian video. Today we're going to be having a, another look at Initiative Tracker. A uh, fair bit's changed with Initiative Tracker since the last time I covered it. Uh, but specifically I wanted to show you some new functionality that's been uh, enabled inside of this fantastic plugin which enables you to actually manage multiple parties. Um, I actually like, I, I have a problem where that, you know, I have lots of people that want to play D&D at my table. Um, I've got groups of kids, young kids, you know, you know, older kids, multiple groups of adults that would love to come and play. Um, and that makes it quite challenging. Um, obviously, you know, from a time issue, let's let put that aside. But when you're using uh, the original initiative tracker, you had to kind of load in your party um, ahead of time in order to also use them in the initiative tracker. So when I came to a situation where I was like, oh, I've got to change my party now. That was really cool. It was like problemsome for me because I was like, oh, oh, hang on. I've got everyone loaded in for my existing party. I'm now about to run a, a game with like eight kids. I don't want to delete everyone. Now, for the technical people amongst us, you'd know that there was a way you could do this. You could go in and rename the data.json file, uh, which is how I was taking backups of my party and then I was just managing multiple files. Um, but obviously, you know, that's in the back end. Um, and you really don't want to kind of have to do that. Um, it's, it's, it's better to be able to do this um, inside the tools. So anyway, I reached out to Jeremy Valentine um, and said, hey, mate, do you reckon you could do this? And he's, uh, he's delivered. He sure has delivered. So anyway, let's jump in and have a look. All right, so in front of me, you can see I've got Obsidian Vault open. Um, this is the vault that I, I play out of primarily. And uh, if we go in here and have a look, we can see oh, I've been putting in some of the uh, Adventure League modules. If we come down here, here's a good example of a uh, an encounter that's basically been put in. Um, and just so you guys can see the code behind this, let's just do this as well. All right, so here we have an encounter file. Uh, we can see encounter. Uh, I've given it a name, I've told it what creatures they're going to fight. So when I come down to that encounter inside here, uh, we can see this is what it renders as. Um, and we can see that I've got my example, that's the name. I can see I've got my, my party that's been loaded and I've got a creature. And if I click this icon here, all right, I can basically have that uh, encounter begin. All right, so over here on the right, I've now got encounter. Um, we can see initiative has been rolled automatically, and we can see that my party has been added to the play, uh, to the team. All right, but what if this was the party that I wasn't using? Well, there's actually a new UI method now. So you can come in here and go tick, switch parties, and I can switch to the kids. Okay. Now this is actually really cool. I like the way this has been done because I don't know the way I kind of visualised this was you you set it before you started your, your thing. But what this actually does is it actually kind of allows you to create sub parties even, right? So instead of you having two different tables, let's say your party split up at the table. You could actually create a sub party. And then when you're at the table, um, you know, you, 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 you're dealing with one party who's gone off in one direction, dealing with a party going off in the other direction. You can very quickly come in here and actually switch parties. So I think this is a really powerful piece of functionality right here. So let's just have a quick look at how this is achieved, okay? So if we come down here to settings, all right, we'll come in here to initiative tracker. All right, you can see I'm already here. And you can see my players. I've got a list of all the players that I have who play at my table currently. Now, there is more. <laughs> I deleted some, I haven't added them back in, so I do need to do that. Um, but what, I, what we've got here is a list of all the people who've been playing at my table. Down here, we've got the new party section. All right, so we've got a default party. All right, so you can see the adults that play in my, type, my party play under Deadly Depth Thin. And I've got the kids group as well. We can add a new party. All right, and we can add players to that party. So we just click. And you can see here that you can actually have um, people in multiple parties. All right, click that little plus button. All right, so now we have the new party as well. All right, so you can see this is really quite robust uh, functionality. Um, and, you know, I, I was trying to think how I would manage, you know, let's say uh, someone doesn't turn up to the table. 
um, of an evening. You know, that, that happens quite often as we'll have out of the eight players you like to play at my table of the adults group, you know, six will turn up and two don't. So what you can actually do is you can come in here and say, oh, I'm just going to remove him from my party uh, for this evening. Um, so then that way he's not included in the uh, the initiative tracking is the way we manage it. Um, and then next week when I come back in, I can just go edit and I can just go add him back in, click save and, you know, off we go. Now in here, we've got uh, a list of the, the, the parties and I can choose my default one. All right. And what I've found is the easiest way is to go through and uh, obviously set all this up beforehand. All right. And then when you're obviously at your table, it's, it's really, it's really quite simple. All right. There's not much to it. You've got your, uh, you've got your encounters. You can click go, you can click change party, and that's pretty much all there is to it. We go to the new party, there we go, look at that. So, as you can see, that is super simple. Now, if this is your first time uh, looking at Initiative Tracker, let's just quickly run through how this does work. So, uh, we've got uh, Initiative is rolled automatically. Um, if we come down here a bit further, we've got some other parties, for example, so I could quite easily come in here and start a different encounter. Again, here's what this sort of looks like in the code. This is a, uh, a different sort of one. You can do this as well, by the way, so you can go table and it changes to a table view. All right, up to you which one you like to use. Um, oh, and yeah, so there we go. So you basically click, click start on your counter, it rolls all your initiative so that you, you automatically get a list. There is an option inside of Initiative Tracker to say roll equivalent creatures together. All right, and you can see that way they all roll the same initiative. Um, and then yeah, you just basically go through. So you've got, uh, you got who's next on the list. Okay, so that's nice and simple. Uh, let's say it's the Goblins turn and they do some damage to Araya here. You can just click on Araya. I think click on the health, you can go, all right, so Araya took six damage. Okay, and you, whoa, what did I just do there? I took it off the wrong person, sorry, I took it off the goblin. Let's say six damage. All right, six damage comes down. If you want to heal, you just go minus six. Okay, that just comes back there, so that's super simple. Um, yeah, there's little options here, you can go, you know, edit. You can add a status. So this person is now frightened. Okay, so that's nice and easy and clear that that has happened. You can disable that person. You can change their marker. I don't use this functionality, but there is basically a uh, sort of like a, a VTT. I won't go through it. It's 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 not something I use. And then yeah, you basically just go through. So everyone has their turn. We we roll real dice at our tables. So I call out the initiative. Um, they roll their dice. They tell me. Um, whether they hit, how much damage they do, and obviously I just you know call out where we're at, and then once the turn's over, we just go next, 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 and move through it. Um, and it's super easy. If you want to add people to this, I really do like that these plus buttons have been added. All right, so you can actually add uh, to the existing combat instead of just resetting it completely. Um, and where this gets really handy, I think I've got an orc here somewhere. Uh, da, da, da. It's been a while since I've used this, to be honest. But if we go through to mechanics reference. Oh, actually, another way I'll do this here. Orc. This is how I usually work. Um, monster manual. Orc. Alright, so we can see that I've now got a link to the orc. I can just click this. And I can add an orc to my party. It rolls initiative automatically. And off it goes. Super see, uh, simple and easy to use. Um, and then yeah, as, as people obviously die or whatever, I, I remove them. So that's easy to do. And then at the end, uh, you can basically go reset HP and statuses. Uh, or go new encounter and it just resets it back to everybody. All right, got and I can then obviously come in here and go party. Very, very easy to use, very, very cool uh, plugin, and I really, really enjoy it. And uh, Jeremy, thank you heaps for adding the, uh, the functionality for the new party. Um, it's, it's really, really handy. I really enjoy it. So 
Anyway, guys, that has been uh, another look at an Obsidian Initiative Tracker with the uh, the new ability to switch parties. Uh, hopefully, that'll be useful to you guys and your management of your your tables. And uh, yeah, enjoy your dice rolling. I'll speak to you guys on the forums.